Tashi Dulay. Please tell us your name. Uh, my name is RJ. Uh, people call me RJ Rumbuchi. Uh, actually, my official name is RJ Love Song Top 10 Jigme Jatsu. Rinpoche La, uh, could we begin by asking you uh, when you were born, what date, and in what place? Okay. So <coughs> I was born in uh, 1950, uh, <coughs> September 21st, uh, in Amdo, uh, Tibet Amdo, uh, and uh, it's a nomad place uh, in a uh, uh, Mongolian tribe, a Tibetan name called uh, Ndavzh. Uh, Dewa, which means Dawj tribe, uh, in Mongolian called uh, Base Hoshu. Uh, yeah, that is my birthplace. Really nearby the Kumbum. Also, uh, there's a very beautiful blue lake, uh, people call Songombo in Tibetan, uh, nearby this lake mm. in Mongolian called Kok Nor. Mm. Yes. Can you describe some of the memories of your childhood? Yes. Uh, definitely. Uh, usually in uh, Tibet, uh, <coughs> when the family have uh, children, mm -hmm. uh, they are willing to send them to a monastery, be a monk, uh, one of them, you know, uh, or a nun. So that's age usually around uh, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, however, mine is very different. When I was two, uh, I went to monastery because they considered me as a reincarnation. Uh, then uh, uh, <coughs> I, I went to monastery with my parents. Uh, I was the, uh, the, <coughs> the seventh uh, Arja Rinpoche's reincarnation. Uh, seventh Arja Rinpoche is the abbot of uh, Kumbum. Uh, also considered as uh, Lama Tsongkhapa's father's reincarnation. So the Arja, uh, the officially in Tibetan language in our place, is father, you know. So then the reincarnation of him. And uh, then I went to monastery uh, with my parents, uh, then also with my uh, two uh, <coughs> uh, older brother. Mm -hmm. I, I have a big family. Uh, How so many were in your family? Uh, we have uh, 11 brothers and sisters. I'm the number nine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, then I, two of my uh, older brother and our uh, brother and sisters, they're younger. Mm -hmm. So they with me and we grew up in the monastery. So we had uh, lots of uh, uh, wonderful stories I still can remember. Uh, then. Uh, I moved can you to, tell uh, us one story? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I, uh, you know, when I uh, <coughs> come to Kumbum, so I stayed in that uh, Arja Rinpoche's Laurang, uh, which means Arja Rinpoche's, uh, you know, like a resident, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big mansion, uh, maybe 200 rooms in that uh, house. Uh, then. Uh, <coughs> Buddha's beautiful, beautiful Buddha shrine, and uh, you know, lots of people uh, serving me. Uh, then I have my own tutor and uh, uh, my own cook uh, and uh, assistants, and a uh, uh, bunch of people playing <laughs> with us like uh, kids, you know. What I mean, so I grew up like that kind of uh, you know, background. Then uh, uh, because I'm a reincarnation, I have to get the special education. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, several tutors. So then, uh, interesting story I would like to uh, share. So my teacher is the uh, <coughs> Mr. Norbu or Professor Norbu, who is the uh, His Holiness older brother's teacher. So uh, His Holiness older brother, Dr. Rinpoche, in Kumbun we call him. Dr. Rinpoche. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Rinpoche left the Tibet in 1950 because the, uh, <coughs> you know, the Chinese com communists uh, mm -hmm. uh, come. So uh, when he left, then our, uh, <coughs> the, uh, you know, uh, Nangchen, which means like our uh, per, uh, per people, you know, like from our mm -hmm. resident, he invited the, uh, Taksam Gigen, which is my teacher's name, 
to our resident to be uh, my teacher before he was the Dr. Rinpoche's teacher. So then uh, I <coughs> uh, studied with him. Uh, then uh, 1958, then I will tell us a story uh, separately. But at that time, the whole thing changed. Then he went to jail because the Chinese uh, great leap forward. So then, uh, then he came back and he passed away. So then I have his uh, uh, relics, you know, like ashes I kept. Mm -hmm. So then 1980, uh, because the Chinese policy is a little bit changed, so that's why Mr. Norbo or Dr. Rinpoche allowed to come back. And uh, he came back and visited the Kumbo Monastery. Then I explained those story. He knew, you know, after he left, and then his teacher became my teacher. So then we're kind of same teacher. That's uh, age is different, right? So I'm much younger anyway. So then I gave uh, uh, little relics to him. So he said, oh, that's great. I'm building a uh, <coughs> stupa, Chorten, in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. I'm going to uh, place this in the, my Chorten. Then he, he did. Then after... Uh, so many years, then I came to uh, U United States, and then 2005, actually 2006, His Holiness asked me to in charge his uh, center in Bloomington. Then I have to uh, move to uh, Indiana from California. So anyway, then I went there, I saw that stupa, then I, uh, right away I remember, oh, 30 years ago, then Tatsu Rinpoche visited the Kumbum, I offered some, uh, you know, my teacher's ash or relics. Now, that's relics here, then that is like kind of a little something story, very interesting to me, very. you know, like a coincidence, so I always remember that, yes. Thank uh. you. Beautiful coincidence and story, and maybe your life has lots of interesting <laughs> phenomena like <laughs> Thank that. You. I just wanted to go back a little bit. You were you grew up in a very large family. Your your parents were they were nomads or farmers. And can you tell me nomads. a little bit about their yes. what was their life situation like when uh, you went to the monastery at two, age two? Yes. But yes. you know you've heard stories. What was their life like before um, you went to the monastery? Yes, that's uh, money background there. So my parents are nomads. So my father. Uh, is, uh, you know, our family, uh, the <coughs> life condition is just the uh, average life. So not really a rich or very poor, so normal. So <coughs> then, uh, you know, in our place, the Tibetans and the Mongolians live together. So my grandfather is a Tibetan. So he is a, a Tibetan ex-monk, I guess. He went to our monastery. Uh, he loved this place. Then he stayed. And then he became my grandfather, you know. So then my father is half and half. And so to me, is one third. I'm a one third Tibetan and uh, one, uh, uh, two, two uh, let me see, one fourth uh, Tibetan and uh, uh, <coughs> three quarters, quarters uh, Mongolian. So that's a, that's a kind of a combination, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a kind of family thing. So anyway, they're nomad. Mm -hmm. So then the reincarnation thing. So the monastery, you know, send some monks. Uh, they call the research group. Okay. Uh, they they came to search group. I mean, they come to our monas uh, nomads, our tribe. Mm -hmm. Then they find the, uh, <coughs> my name and the other kids' name. Then they uh, report those names to uh, uh, the Tenth Panchalama. So at th that time, the Tenth Panchalama stayed in Kumbu Monastery. So since he was very young. Anyway, then, uh, then finally, the Panchalama decided to me as the reincarnation of the uh, <coughs> eighth uh, Arja Rinpoche. So then uh, I moved to Kumbu but they still in the uh, <coughs> their place. So then we have uh, uh, because the nomads. So we live in the Mongol gear, not the, the Tibetan tents. It's a, a Mongolian gear. Mm -hmm. 
So, can you uh, describe what a Mongolian gear looks like? Yeah, Mongolian gear, uh, they have a very unique uh, structure, wooden structure around the wall uh, that's all integrated, like uh, sticks, like that. Uh, then, uh, then they have a uh, small beams uh, go just like a uh, sun shining, you know, like a uh, wrong big uh, uh, around the one in the middle. Then the little uh, beams touch to the uh, round one to uh, the wall. And then covered by very thick, uh, uh, you know, like a felter of a felt, right? So uh, then that's keep warm. Inside has a, a middle of that area has a fire, so that is the uh, <coughs> fire for lights and the cook and the warm and the everything heat heater, you know. So then uh, around that uh, <coughs> gear, then the people are gonna stay. Uh, usually uh, there's a door come can, can come in. So right side is the kitchen area. So that's area you can't go. Then the left side is, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, like a family uh, gathering place. So uh, the crust that's a fire, uh, so that's uh, uh, in front of that door there, that is the uh, guest, uh, uh, you know, important place. The, the guest, the honor guest, and everyone can sit there. So that is kind of the Mongol gear. How about how large would that <coughs> Mongol gear be? Um, that's uh, pretty big. Some of them pretty big. Maybe uh, um, bigger than a uh, uh, small guest, uh, you know, living room. Bigger you know, than a living room, average living room, like yeah, 12 average, by 12, bigger than something that. Something like that, yeah. Maybe uh, um, 20 feet. Uh, Diameter maybe twenty feet, twenty five maybe something like that. So, yeah, so that's that's a kind of you know our living condition. Then also uh, they hurt animals. So uh, every family might have uh, uh, fifty to one hundred or several hundred uh, sheep. Uh, then also have uh, yaks. Now uh, then uh, yak maybe have. Uh, uh, 30, 40 yaks, then uh, maybe 10, 20 uh, horses. Uh, some place have uh, camels, but uh, our place, we don't have uh, camels. So those are kind of, uh, you know, the... Well, you were uh, so little when yeah. you went. You were two years old when you went to the monastery. monastery. So were you able to go back and, and see your family and be in, in that area at, from yes. time to time? <laughs> And, uh, and did you watch them grow up, some of your brothers and sisters? Supposedly, yes, but uh, not me, you know. So I didn't have the chance to visit uh, uh, my family since I was uh, uh, seven. So I just uh, visited one time, which is my uh, first time and the last time. So uh, then I visited my home because before that, uh, my position so if we we'll go back to uh, hometown, it's a big deal, you know. The monastery have a big make arrangements. The village have to do something. The tribes have to do something. So that's maybe because people are thinking about that. And then I didn't have the chance to visit uh, my home. But uh, at the seven, I visited once. So I enjoyed that very much. Did you? Yes. So we riding horses from our monastery to uh, our family. So take uh, uh, two, three years on the uh, road. Actually, just uh, one year, oh, uh, two, 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 three days. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, two, three days. Uh, actually, just take one day can get there, but uh, because we're kind of a summer vacation. Mm -hmm. so having fun. <laughs> yeah, having a fun. So then I, when I went to my... <coughs> Um, uh, hometown, so the lots of people gather there, then the lots of uh, children come together, then we all played, and uh, you know, the kids are playing, then the elders are uh, staying uh, gear and uh, chatting like that. Then, so my tutor and my housekeeper and my assistant, the cook, and everyone went together, so we have a big group, maybe 20 or 30 people together, yeah. When would you say, at what age did the realization that you were 
seen and recognized as a special reincarnation. When do you think that occurred to you? Or did you feel like you just grew up um, sort of accepting that? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's way. I think that's way. But uh, usually uh, around uh, uh, six, seven, I had this feeling uh, because, uh, uh, because they uh, they train me always like uh, reincarnation. The reincarnations sort of have a uh, little bit of special responsibilities. Uh, they have to uh, greeting people, so, you know, when some special guests come and visit. Then you, some occasion you have to say something. Uh, even you are young, you have uh, that position. You might say some prayers or you some lead some chantings or uh, you might say something, you know, whenever they made some decision, you have to say it. So uh, that's, that's kind of a thing I have uh, that's a special responsibility. Uh, that's uh, occurred to me like a, I'm a special, you know, something like that. Yes, something uh, mm -hmm. yes. different. Uh, yes. So then uh, <coughs> that's, that's also made the, uh, my life is different than others. Than the others in the monastery. Yes. Than the other students the that were your yeah. age. Uh -huh. So in the, uh, <coughs> that uh, I was born in 1950, I mentioned, right? 1958, then a uh, big thing happened in our monastery. That time, our monastery had uh, almost uh, uh, 2,000 to 3,000 monks there. Before, yes. you, before you get into that, that's what I wanted to understand. Where... Where are these 2,000 monks coming from? You're talking about a monastery in a very wide and unpopulated area aside from the nomads. So where are these monks coming from? Who supports financially the monastery? How do you survive in terms of food and other needs? Can you talk a little bit about the yeah. functioning of the monastery? Even though I know you were <coughs> young, you, you must have witnessed some of that. Sure, sure. So uh, that's a big question. If we, we discuss that, so maybe take a very long time, but I will make them shorter, okay? So uh, in Tibet, we have uh, different monasteries, uh, small monasteries. Every village have one. That's just like, uh, uh, you know, church in a town. So we call it Mani Khan. So then the bigger monastery, like uh, every county have one maybe. Mm -hmm. So several hundred people or 50, 20, 50 monks live there. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly served the uh, village. Mm -hmm. So uh, when something happened to village people, like somebody passed away or somebody have to say some prayers or somebody ill or some ceremony or something, they serve those things. Then the bigger monastery we call uh, monastic universities. Mm -hmm. So that's like a, uh, you know, uh, provincial level. So every province have one. So that's uh, monks are from the all over that area. So for instance, Kumbum is one of the biggest monastery. Uh, that's also related to some kind of background. So our monastery was the uh, Lama Zongkhapa's birthplace. Lama Zongkhapa is the founder of Gelupa tradition, which is His Holiness Dalai Lama and Panchalama and those uh, tradition. Uh, then uh, the monastery has a certain uh, the several thousand. Used to we have uh, seven thousand monks. Seven thousand. Seven thousand at, at the Kumbum. One Western uh, missionary. Uh, went there that time. That's in the nineteen eighteen uh, hundreds. Mm -hmm. So they had the seven thousand monks. That usually they have uh, three thousand six hundred monks. Oh. So that's large monast uh, monks stay there. Uh, the main purpose is study. So they have uh, that's a uh, you know studying program, uh, just like uh, universities. So they have a uh, different grades and they have uh, different classes and take time to you know, study and uh, that's the curriculums and uh, everything just like uh, set up as a school. Uh, then the uh, how, who can uh, support them and how they survive because the, around this area has uh, villages that's all the village support the monastery. So that's uh, usually in our uh, tradition they uh, <coughs> establish a monastery the certain uh, county and a certain area, they will come together and set up a monastery in 
in that uh, uh, middle area. So then the uh, village can send the monks to the monastery to study. Mm -hmm. So the village will uh, support that monastery. So the, monastery. the monasteries were often, then the, in, the, the wish Local. to have a monastery yes. arose from the people themselves, or at least in terms of their providing support for it. Exactly. Because exactly. there's a lot of criticism of, of monastic life in Tibet by uh, cr critics such as the Chinese who say that the monasteries were taking advantage of the people, were subjugating the people. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to know from the inside, how did you feel the monasteries were held by the people in the community? Yeah, that's, uh, that's really uh, told the truth. They criticized us. They have uh, some reason. They just not uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> out of nothing to say or some. No, they have uh, some reason. Uh, the very beginning, because the uh, local people needed that monastery, they supported that, that their son had to send to monastery to study, became educated like that. So that's why they have to have uh, that uh, monastic uh, uh, universities around this area. When they settled down that monastery there, then the all local people uh, supporting them. Uh, then they grew up bigger and bigger. Uh, of course, that's uh, village people they don't have ability to uh, help the monastery. So then the uh, monastery have a big, uh, you know, uh, lamas and the very important uh, uh, reincarnations. They become very famous. Then they have uh, students all over the uh, place, maybe even in uh, Mongolia or in uh, far away to the China or somewhere. So then they then that teacher go to uh, those very place to give teachings and talks and initiations and so forth. So they will have uh, those students following them. They, they can come to monastery to stay. So that's why at one point I mentioned that the Rinpoche's, you know, the high lamas houses as big as a mansion. Then when I was young, I was playing those places, empty rooms a lot. They're all are empty, nothing there. Then I was wondering, what, what that's for, you know? What that's for? Who is staying here? Then later on, I find out that those are guest house. So when the, during the big uh, ceremonies, the, uh, you know, the patrons or their donors, you know, sponsors from different places, they have to stay. So they provide this place to stay. When they stay, they make a donation for the monastery. They make a donation for the Rinpoche. So in that case, uh, they will uh, support the monastery. Uh, then that depends on the, mon the high lamas. The high lamas are very you know, qualified and studied well and very famous, then that's wonderful. If uh, sometimes, you know, people always can't make it even, all, right? So some of them maybe uh, uh, lose their uh, sponsors. Maybe uh, they uh, behave not well or whatever, something happened. So the, the, uh, the housekeepers, they have to go somewhere to find the sponsor. They have to ask some donations. So those are later on the Chinese government uh, uh, criticized, you know, you go and uh, you just uh, give the burden to the local people, you know, kind of take away their uh, you know, something, money or value or something. So that's, that's the reason they're criticized. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I see. Then uh, did any Mongolians or many Mongolians and Chinese attend Kumbum for, for education in the Buddhist tradition? Um, <coughs> Mongolians, yes, but at that time in the 1950s and uh, uh, early then that, uh, I don't think there's lots of Chinese, uh, but lots of Mongolians. Mm -hmm. For instance, I mentioned, you know, in our monastery, almost we have uh, 3,000 monks, maybe uh, one-fourth uh, Mongolians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're from Inner Mongolia, from uh, Mongolia, now they call the Republic of Mongolia, you know. Uh, and that was areas. when you were living there? Yes. About yes. one quarter were people yes. from Mongolia? Rinpoche La, yes. what, it sounds like the, that period in the monastery from two uh, on was, was somewhat tranquil but exciting and you were learning and many, many uh, 
having access to many good teachers, etc. When does your life begin to change in the monastery? How old are you and what happens? Age of eight. Age of eight, which is 1958, is a big change. My life almost upside down. So what's happened, uh, that uh, there's a uh, political, uh, you know, movement or political campaign uh, occurred to our monastery. So that was the Chinese government, Chinese communist government, they changed the policy. Before that, they allowed the Tibetans to say prayers and uh, do the, uh, you know, practice and do whatever they have for traditional things and they allowed to do. But in 1958, uh, I, I would like to share one story, very fascinating story. So uh, when I was very young, I <coughs> studying sutras and uh, so forth with my teacher like that. Then people came to uh, <coughs> us, they have to kind of make an appointment, you know. Uh, so assistant came and uh, will report somebody's coming and so forth. Then the teacher said, well, no, 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 that's not a good time or later or they have a time. So one day, uh, four people come in. So uh, <coughs> one of them wearing a robe, three of them just wearing uh, civilian clothes. So they came and they said a lot, but I, I can't understand it. I feel like uh, those people are a little bit rude. You know, they didn't uh, make uh, that kind of appointment and, uh, you know, greeting to the teachers. They come and like uh, saying something loudly. And then my teacher just say, say yes, say yes. Then I have to say, oh yeah, oh yeah, say yes, yes. Then, then they're kind of <laughs> laughing like that. And then they left. So then, uh, start that time, my teacher and uh, those uh, others, they're kind of uh, worried, you know, like worried. They're showing that uh, uh, <coughs> sad face on there. You know, so anyway, then the uh, next day, next morning, uh, we went to a big uh, meeting. Before the meeting, my teacher told me, said, uh, boy, he always told me, boy, I'm eight years old. Now you have to take care of your life on by your own. Um, what's going to happen, we don't know. So start today, you have to believe that karma. So the karma is the most important uh, you know, cause and effect. Don't do bad things. Don't do something you know, against your conscience, like uh, do bad things. You always have to protect. Uh, you know, worship the three jewels and uh, uh, protectors, and uh, uh, by your own. Okay, then that's that's his message. And then we left. Then we went to uh, uh, <coughs> there's a big courtyard. Every monastery almost have that's uh, all monks gather there and uh, doing a uh, uh, <coughs> New Year's party and the uh, big prayers and the, the debating and the chum dancing and the, those kind of thing happen there. So our monastery, I mentioned, you know, we have uh, three, four thousand monks used to we have. So that's why big courtyard, courtyard. Then all monks gather there on the ground, myself. So then there's a stage area. Usually we're staying on that stage area, the abbot and the high lamas, but that, not that day. That day they set up a table on the table, you know, uh, <coughs> that's all Chinese officials sitting there. Uh, they have a big uh, banner, so all in Chinese, uh, we can't read what they said. So they all wearing a kind of, you know, like a blue Mao suit, and uh, some of them are soldiers, you know, military person. Uh, all of them with gun, so they sit on the uh, that's a stage. Then all monks uh, <coughs> uh, sitting on the ground, like all uh, two, three thousand monks gathered there. Then the uh, another soldiers they with uh, uh, machine guns and every they on the roof and they run the us like that. But uh, I'm not uh, scared because I never seen that kind of thing before. <laughs> what's gonna, what's the different, right? So then everybody is serious. They really quiet. Then uh, one of the uh, <coughs> leader Chinese leader they stand up. They said give a talk. So they said something. They they put the big speakers very loud. They said something very strong, almost kind of yelling at. So then they said something. 
after I don't know after thirty minutes or so, then then his uh, talk is over. Then one guy somewhere they stand up. They uh, sh shouting a slogan. The slogan later on we learned. They said the time to uh, uncover the feudalism. Time to uh, you know uncover the uh, time to. Uh, <coughs> reform the religion, uh, time to revenge, or so, so forth. Then after few slogans, then everyone have to follow them and say that loudly. Then say the several times, oh, the sound was wrong, wrong, like that. Everybody's scared. Then the, some uh, <coughs> soldiers with gun, and the, some trained the, uh, some trained the village people and the plus monks uh, with big ropes. They come to our group. Then they rest one monk from our group. Then uh, tied it up. Then start beating him. So he was the uh, former abbot. So he is an uh, elder, like uh, 60 so. So then he can't handle it. He never happened this kind of thing in his life. He starts crying. He can't handle it. They tied very tight, you know. So then uh, they start to beat with uh, like uh, some uh, sticks and uh, some something, some wraps or something, you know. They start beating him. So then maybe after 10 more minutes, maybe. So then they start the shooting. That's the slogans. They come to that monks and our crowded, and then they uh, rest others. Then they, that they rested maybe uh, 500 monks. So my teacher, my tutor, my cook, and the assistant, everyone is gone <laughs> that day. They all went to jail. So directly went to jail. Then later they said, uh, uh, they sent uh, uh, 30 or 50 big trucks uh, waiting for uh, them on the outside the monastery. Mm. Uh, then they rested them and uh, they went to uh, that's a big truck and uh, directly went to a city to a jail. So then start that day, when I come back, that usually, you know, I'm in the, uh, that's a resident, I said, you know, they treat me very high because I'm a abbot of Kumbum. So I treated as a little king. So, but uh, after that, nobody's, you know, with me. So when I come back, and then my room already occupied by some strangers. So then I don't know where I should go. Where I don't know where I get the food. And then maybe I cried a little bit, you know. So then I'm just uh, playing, and that's a big cordy are there, and uh, you know my resident. Then uh, uh, around the evening, one older monk came and uh, uh, you know adopted me. So that's, that's, that's a big change. <laughs> so then start that day, the monks can't wear the robe. No more practice and no more prayers and everything. They call it religious reform because the all religion considered it as a poison. They stopped. The all high lamas are arrested and went to jail. And some of them, most of them passed away. Some of them, they stayed in jail like uh, 20 years. So my parents, same thing happened to my parents, but I later we know, but at that time, I don't know what, the same time almost, you know, they come to our every places, every Tibet and China, everywhere, just like that. So they come to our village, and they had uh, that kind of same meeting. Uh, then they arrested my father, because my father was uh, the High Lama's father. So that's the reason. <laughs> Otherwise, he just a nomad, nomad. So then he went to jail. He never come back. He passed away in jail. So that's just the kind of little sad story. You know, I, when I uh, recall, in my family, they almost arrested 29 people. So my parents, my, you know, uh, my father and my tutor and my uncle and uh, lots of people. So. That's, that's something I would like to share. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, what, what a tragic ending to a beautiful monastic life. 
So what were you and the other monks feeling at that time? Can you remember uh, how you felt? You were only, uh, at that point, eight, eight, years. eight years old. Yeah. Eight years. Do you know, I mean, this very nice older monk adopted you, meaning he was going to keep an eye on you. Yes. Uh, and so maybe you could continue with the story. What, what happens then? <clears throat> So and what were you feeling? After, after that, after that, I guess ninety percent people are scared. Of course, they're worried and they're sad. They're scared mostly because the worry is they might rest them. They might uh, have something to rest them. You know, even the rest you rest. That's words we didn't know that. So they, that time, even people uh, kind of complaining each other, they might say that. They're gonna arrest you like that. So even they, uh, then afterwards, the, the monks have to forcefully disrobe, work in the fields. I was sent to a Chinese school, became a Chinese student. Where? In a town, uptown, Kumbum. Mm -hmm. So near Kumbum. Mm -hmm. Near Kumbum is a big town called, called uh, Huangzhong County. Yes. So I, I was in that uh, Chinese school. So those are kind of a story. What, what, <laughs> what, if you were in a Chinese school, were you expected to speak Chinese? And were the other students Chinese or were they Tibetans? Tell us a little bit about that school. I, I don't think there's, uh, there are a few Tibetans there, maybe a few Tibetans there, most of them local Chinese people there, the Chinese students. So it was so <coughs> a city near Kumbum where the majority were Chinese? Majority of Chinese. So. That's actually near Kumbum. Kumbum is a very, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, special area, edge of Tibet and the edge of China. So uh, mostly the local people are Chinese. Uh, then some of them, them are Tibetan tribes like that, mm -hmm. but they uh, can't speak Tibetan because the influence from the China. Mm -hmm. So uh, then lots of Muslims around our, our area too. Mm -hmm. So then they, uh, you know, when I sent you at the Chinese school, then all speak Chinese, then they, you have to study Chinese. Then we have to cut our ropes to diet and then wearing, uh, sewing those kind of uh, making a, that's a Chinese like a mouse suit and uh, wearing them and they went to a school. Yeah. You didn't know how to speak Chinese no, at that time? No, no. What, what was the school like for you? Just tell <coughs> me a little a, bit that's about that's in the school, you know, just uh, we went there, we started, uh, you know, I'm at age of eight, so that's not too mm -hmm. big for a school. Then uh, some of other monks, uh, I guess I remember seven of us sent to a monastery. Some of them a little older, like uh, 13 or something. Otherwise, almost the same age. Then we start to study Chinese and uh, speaking Chinese very quick, you know, because the kids, kids so. You're smart. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, our place, they speak local Chinese though. So that's why easier. So everyone is it's easier. easier. Yeah. And how does your life progress then between eight? What happens in the next eight so years? So another eight years had lots of back and forwards. So I can't really complete all the story in that uh, several minutes. Uh, then after that, right after that, so start in 1959 to 62, our place had a very big tragedy, which we call a famine, big famine. Actually, not the famine, though, because that is a political movement. So people know food. They can't, uh, they don't have, we don't have food to eat. We eat the green grass. We eat the green grass. We eat uh, very terrible things. So wood. Sometimes maybe like a shoes, like that kind of thing. So then lots of people died. I, I don't know the number. I don't know the number. I, I, uh, what year? That was, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, my 10 to 12, uh, 9 to 12, yeah. 19, start in 1959 to uh, 62. So, that's, uh, that's all happened. So that time I'm working, I'm uh, going to a school, but the monks work in the fields, like they do a, a hard labor as a farmer, you know. So then uh, afterwards, and then the uh, situation's a little bit eased because the Panchen Lama, the uh, 
uh, did not only a Panch Lama because the Chinese uh, government had to look at the uh, conflicts. You know, some liberal would say we have to change the position. Some of the say no. Like uh, afterwards, the liberals win. So that's why the the situation is a little bit eased. So, could you explain uh, what the Panch and Lama is? Yeah. Then the Panch and Lama uh, actually the <coughs> Chinese government's expectation is. The, when 1959, the pa Dalai Lama uh, <coughs> left, uh, escaped, and then the Panchen Lama still in China, uh, they will uh, train or ask him to order him to uh, uh, say something good for, only good for the Chinese government. So even criticize the Dalai Lama, that is their expectation. However, when Panchen Lama grew up, so totally different. Is very uh, uh, <coughs> strongly uh, sporting, and not only sporting is preserving Tibetan uh, religion and the culture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when he came to our monastery since two, uh, 1962, so we had a big meeting. So on this meeting conference, kind of conference we had on this conference. He asked uh, monks to say something because that time monks are already afraid. They, they can't say anything. They just say, oh, the government is wonderful and wonderful. The policy is wonderful. Then he said, he assumed me, you all have uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know, worry behind you. You don't need to scare. You don't need to worry. You just uh, told what happened to your monastery, what happened to your life. Then somebody started crying and uh, they're telling the what the sad stories happened to their, you know, history, and uh, uh, how many monks arrested, and then the monastery was terrible, and uh, no more practice, and uh, so forth. They, so that time, actually, uh, the Panchen Lama was doing a, a kind of uh, research for the Tibetan area, what's happened. So his idea is uh, he's going to write a big reporter and to the report to the Chinese government to change their policy because your uh, so-called uh, uh, policy for the Chinese ethnic group, so that's just wrong. So, so that's what he did. Uh, then that time, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, two other, uh, myself and another uh, young uh, Rinpoche, uh, we went to Lhasa to Jashin Rinpoche to study. <coughs> So that's a little bit the gap, you know, the sun shining from the <laughs> uh, breaking clouds. So uh, we had a little chance to went to a uh, uh, to study uh, with Panchalama and uh, some other monks there. Mm -hmm. So then, just uh, three years or four years, then the situations changed again. So then the uh, <coughs> what year? Excuse me, but what year did you go to Lhasa? To study? Uh, uh, or how old were you? Uh, 12. I was 12, 12. maybe uh, uh, 62. So 1962. In 1962. So if yeah. you were 12 and it's 62, His Holiness has left. Lhasa has been four, obviously attacked four or five years. and, yeah. and, and yeah. been under, under, under uh, yeah. terrible conditions. Yeah. I, I just wanted to understand something. When when you went to that Chinese school, when mm -hmm. you were that young boy, yeah. did you come back to the monastery yeah, yeah, yeah. to live? So, and can you talk to us, like, what were the conditions in the monastery? Because sure. people who weren't there have no idea mm -hmm. what the conditions, how they changed or deteriorated. Mm -hmm. can, can you describe what happened from the time you were out at the school and then would come back to live? Yeah. So that time, actually, the all monasteries closed, not uh, destroyed. Not uh, destroyed. That's, uh, that was 1958. Mm -hmm. So uh, because they closed, they considered that monastery as a uh, uh, you know, place for the feudalism and uh, for the uh, you know, religion as a poison. So that's why they closed. Then the all monastery, you know, the all belongings, they confiscated, like the uh, wealth, like uh, you know, money or material or food or everything they government take away. What happened to the, <coughs> to the, uh, the any of the sacred teachings? The or sacred teachings, they storched. 
they put in the storage, they put in uh, in the monastery. They, they, you can't have a Buddhist altar. They just take them down and put in the, like a boxes or like a, you know somewhere. And what so, about sacred text? Uh, that's a sutra. All the same thing. They so put it. They put they it away. They, they didn't put destroy it. Away. it. They didn't destroy it. They didn't bring them down. Huh. So that's uh, that was 1958. Oh so then the all monastery, the, the monks have to dis disrobe. Then they disrobed, they stay together, live in the monastery. They not allowed the monks to go away. Oh. Some of them, they come and they pick some of them up and to a, send to a school. Some of them became uh, like uh, workers or some factories or somewhere they pick up some. But uh, most monks stay in the monastery. They allowed them to marry it but uh, not, uh, uh, they didn't destroy the monastery at that time, 1958. So then we all work in the fields, the monks. They come back, stay in monastery. No more practice, no more prayers, any, anything. Even the Buddhas and the everything, they just uh, put them away in uh, somewhere. So that's all Buddhist room became a big uh, storage. Uh, they uh, piled up like uh, big uh, uh, <coughs> things like, you know, containers or some food or something, but not uh, the Buddhist shrine. So the, the, during the Cultural Revolution, they started to destroy them. That was later. That's, that's Comes a, later. almost 10 years Ten years after. later. That's yeah. what we'll talk about that next. So in a way, the heart of the monastery was taken out. Yes. Repressed or hidden. Exactly. And, and exactly. it was like living in a shell in some ways. Exactly, exactly. If yeah. you couldn't pray, you couldn't gather as monks, you couldn't do any kind of ceremonies. Yeah. Were the people depressed or upset oh, or scared? Of course. Scared? I said that the first thing, 90% people scared. Right. they all scared. What's going to happen next? You know, they don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. So that's why they're very scared. Then, uh, yeah. Your teacher said something, remember karma. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so was there any talk among the monks of, uh, is this related to our karma? Why is this happened because to that's us? Because that's what happened to the karma. Uh, the, the, of course, uh, some of them, uh, according to our teaching, teachings, you know, that's uh, is karma, karma made that's happened. But the, his message is you have to be careful because some of them trained monks, they went crazy, you know. So they start like uh, uh, denounce the elders and they do the bad things. So that's why his message is you have to behave well. Don't do bad things. They, that's going to accumulate the bad karma. So you have to be, a, you know, kind of a nice conscience and the self discipline in like a self-disciplination, like that's, that's, that's his message is later, I, I think, remember. Do you think there was any particular reason why some of the monks went mad or crazy, as you said, and, and decided to become uh, mouthpieces or instruments of the Chinese? Do you have any sense of why people would have done that's that? A, that's, of course, that's everywhere that can happen because that's uh, uh, several reasons. So most of them, they're afraid. If they ask, they to, you have to deny somebody. They have to, but otherwise they may affect this person. So they're scared. Uh, secondly, some of them they brainwashed. So they just like, oh, they did great. I should do that. So lots of reasons. So that's why mostly the young people did this. Uh, you know, uh, elders are better. So then when afterwards, that's after. After that's everything changed. The young people are better, the older are worse because the older are so scared. They're so kind of, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, conservative or something. They can't say bad, they can't say good, they just uh, say something quiet, you know. They do. Uh, oh, they yeah. felt very vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> very, very vulnerable. Uh, so, in, uh, so you're going to school, you're coming back to the monastery at night. And uh, or to live there, and then and then what what's the next uh, big change for you? Then then I I went to uh, uh, Lhasa Jashilumpo to study. Then uh, uh, almost the same thing I just mentioned, you know, happened again in my life. So that's that's called the uh, <coughs> uh, education 
uh, uh, movement or something they call so the communist education movement so at that time the Chinese or oh, the Panchen Lama self became a counter-revolutionary so then they put him in jail and arrested him so then the whole monastery changed again uh, before the Panchen Lama protected so the monastery in Lhasa, in Jashilumbu, they allowed to practice and so forth. So afterwards, then no, nothing. For people who don't know, can you explain the, the role of the Panchen Lama within the Tibetan tradition? Mm -hmm. oh, who yes. is he? They yes. know the Dalai Lama, but they don't always know yes. about the Panchen yes, Lama. Yes. So the Panchen Lama and the Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama, the Tibetan people will describe both of them as sun and moon. So one is sun, one is moon. Of course, uh, Panchen Lama is moon. Uh, compared to sun, it's a little bit uh, less, but uh, still, you know, like uh, two spiritual leaders in their mind. So uh, <coughs> the, when uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama left, then the Panchen Lama act as the Dalai Lama. Uh, also, the government, Chinese government, uh, you know, uh, offer him uh, such a high position at that time. So that's why he can officially go this way, and he also personally uh, protect and uh, support the Dharma and the Tibetan culture. Yeah. How did he become a counter-revolutionary? So because the uh, another political campaign. So the, the political campaign is the preparation for the uh, cultural revolution. So after that, so then they, that time, they arrested lots of uh, Chinese officials, too, because the Chinese officials, I'm assuming, they have uh, different ideas in between. You know, some of them are crazy, some of them liberal. They said, we shouldn't do that because that, that's the way we can, the country can develop. You know, the people can become rich or whatever. Then the, some of them said, no, 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 that's not a, a communist, that's just a capitalist. So that's why they have uh, uh, a kind of uh, controversies in between. So then later the Cultural Revolution started, and then the liberal uh, officials plus those, uh, you know, lamas and priests all uh, became uh, bad people. Yeah. I just want to ask how. How did you, when things eased up, you were allowed to travel to Lhasa to study? Yes. And how did you get from the Kumbun Monastery? Oh, that's a, to uh, actually, that's a lot easy because, you know, uh, olden days uh, take years and years to get there, right? Yeah. No, no, uh, because I was Panchen Lama. So then there's a special jet from uh, uh, Xining, which is uh, uh, capital of uh, Amdo, uh, to uh, Lhasa supposedly to Lhasa, but uh, you know, that time still, uh, we are halfway down and we stop there. Then we, uh, the uh, cars, you know, we buying cars and uh, we ride cars to uh, So you were with Lhasa. the Panchen Lama? With Panchen Lama, uh, yeah. and, and And in what role were you accompanying him? Uh, Panchen Lama and the Panchen Lama's uh, entourage, uh, then a bunch of Chinese officials, uh, because he is uh, a very high official in China at that time. So then uh, there's another uh, very high Tibetan official called Ngapu Ngawang Jingme. So he just uh, passed away, you know, some time ago. He was the one of the four uh, important, like, uh, prime ministers and, uh, mm, you know, ministers under the Tibetan government. Mm -hmm. You know, he is the one of them, Galun. Galun, four Galuns, right? Gasha. So he is the one of the Gasha. So lots of uh, criticism for him because he, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, initially uh, contacted the Chinese in 19, uh, early 50s or something. So anyway, that person was there. Then uh, the, uh, myself and the other young Rinpoche, Serto Rinpoche, two of us, uh, then uh, with my uncle, my uncle as Jaya Rinpoche is uh, was uh, the uh, Panchen Lama's tenth Panchen Lama's teacher tutor. So then we all together a big group, maybe two hundred people together, maybe so.
<laughs> yeah. And so you from flew. From Amdo. You flew from Amdo and Pure. got into Lhasa. And then yes. what happened? Tell us about your life in Lhasa at, at age 12. What are you doing there? Uh, then I uh, then I went to a uh, Trashilumbu monastery. Yes. Uh, so Trashilumbu monastery had uh, those kind of terrible things in uh, 1959. However, very soon they uh, kind of uh, <coughs> uh, they yes they uh, re, uh, 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 recovered because the Panchen Lama is supporting them and uh, uh, like uh, protecting them. Mm -hmm. So then I went to monastery and uh, with uh, teacher and uh, study in monastery just like uh, olden <laughs> uh, you know days. like olden days. Uh, then I went to. Uh, uh, you know, the monastery to practice, study the debating, and the, you know, like the morning prayers, the evening prayers, and the, we had lots of fun. So after three or four years, so the all of a sudden changed. Then we have another big uh, uh, political campaign. So I just said that. Upheaval. Uh, yeah, that's called the social educational, socialist educational uh, campaign. So we studied the uh, one year and uh, <coughs> two months or something, altogether 14 months, study the communist uh, document. <laughs> did so. they bring, did they, uh, so you're at Tashi Lumpo. Yes. I, I did want to ask, what was it like after all those years to be back in a monastery and practicing again? How did that feel? Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, for me, is interesting. Uh, for them, maybe they changed everything. So for me, in uh, before 1958, in our monastery, when even I'm uh, young, but I still remember those uh, tradition and uh, those custom and so forth, right? So after that's all gone, then I became Chinese students. Then the students' life and uh, in China, work in the fields and so forth. In 62, I went there, look like I come to a new world, you know, like, oh, that's all, remember all traditions, like in the monastery, like that. Then soon after, I said that that's uh, the uh, educational, so-called the socialist educational the, uh, program uh, that the ca campaign started. From the then Chinese government. From the Chinese government. We started that, and then the monasteries uh, before was uh, just uh, studying, you know, read the, the uh, mouse books and uh, so forth. Mm -hmm. Then later on, uh, you can't have a practice. They're not allowed to practice. Then the 1958, that's happened again. But the 1958, they come just one night all of a sudden. But that's once like uh, gradually. So then slowly, slowly, before you can practice later, uh, several months, you can't. Then later said no. Then eventually have to denounce Panchen Lama. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing. So then, then All because... The, excuse me, but who had it? The Chinese were saying you now have to denounce the Panchen Lama. Yeah, the Chinese Because they government. were angry at him. Yes, the Chinese his... government uh, always, they call the... Uh, <coughs> the uh, what they call the uh, work team. They call work team. So the work team formed uh, as the soldiers and uh, some other uh, officials and the communist uh, uh, country and all together. Uh, maybe uh, 200 people, maybe they come and stay in the monastery. So they will uh, range that all the studies and the programs. Mm -hmm. Then they have a, a plan, you know, first step, what they should say, second step. Then they take time, you know, like a one year over one year plan so they know what we should do, what we should do. And then the slowly, slowly, tighter and tighter, tighter and tighter. Then in the monastery, only study. You can't go out. If you want to go somewhere, you have to ask permission first. So without the permission, you can't leave like that. Then they add more working things on it. You have to go out and work like that. Then after, uh, then eventually I said, you know, they denounced some, the beginning they denounced other monks, elders like that. You know, I mentioned the uh, 1958 in, happened in our monastery. 
exactly. Same, same thing, thing. at Tashi Lumpo? Tashi Lumpo, yeah. They arrested some older monks. They started denouncing them and the yelling them and the complaining and the, like that. Then we know, oh, that's happened again. So then they, they, didn't, they didn't say the Panchen Lama, you know. Finally, one day, all of a sudden, we had a big uh, meeting. Then uh, start, uh, uh, you know, denouncing him. So I thought maybe he's already in somewhere. He gonna, they're going to put the handkerchiefs and he will come. And then I'm so scared, but he's not there. But we just uh, denounced him. So I published my uh, memoir. So you should read that. <laughs> you know, I mentioned all of the stories, uh, you know, <coughs> on it. So there was a it. slow... Uh, as you said, re-education program in the monastery, very yes. slowly, slowly, slowly. And they were teaching the monks about, about uh, Maoist doctrine. Yes, yes. And, and educating. Did you find it useful or helpful? Were you no, no, that's, a, no, that's, a, you don't, they just are telling the uh, stories and the everything. At that time, one of the uh, topic is the, uh, <clears throat> the Russia, you know. They said uh, Russia already became a uh, uh, kind of uh, communist country. So the Russia, how was wonderful it is, and then like uh, uh, when you go to Russia, like what they look like. They almost, you know, that's very interesting. When I come to West, they almost describe that's a Western system that time. They are dreaming, you know, <laughs> that when they uh, come to the, that's they call the socialist. Uh, uh, country became a communist country. They will be a, like that, look like that, you know. So they just describe those things, but it never happened. Then they describe, describe. Then finally, they have a idea. They have to point at something. They have to denounce the Panchen Lama. So that is the reason. So they they just making a comparison, you know, like the communist and the feudalism. They say that's a traditional thing is the feudalism. You're so bad, like, oh, very, that's, uh, you know, slaves and the so forth and the bad and bad, the, the, the monks take uh, people's wealthy way and the wealth way or something like that. But, uh, uh, you know, the communist is so wonderful is like uh, so on. So then later they will denounce the Panchen Lama. So, and that, so that, did, that, uh, yeah. did many people, uh, out of fear or whatever choice, <coughs> denounce the Panchen Lama when they came that day? They have to. You had they to. They have to. There's uh, no choice. I guess, you know, uh, <coughs> I will say 80% people are so scared that they can't, uh, they can't, they can't, uh, they have to say. Uh, maybe uh, 20, uh, then 10% people, very brave, they can't say. They said, no, I can't describe. Then I can't denounce. I, I can't denounce my Lama. I can't denounce against my religion or something. Maybe those people in a problem. Maybe they're going to arrest them or they're going to yelling them again or something. So that's why some, lots of people are so scared. Maybe 10% they brainwashed. Maybe they, they went crazy. So some of them went crazy, yeah. That's uh, people, just the people, you know, <laughs> very difficult to describe, yeah. In, so what happens to you next? So then the Cultural Revolution. So then soon after uh, they send us back. So there's lots of details, but I don't have a time to describe all of them. But the, the, then the Cultural Revolution happened. So they send back, uh, send us back. When I to where? To Kumbum, from Lhasa to Kumbum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How then old were they, you? Uh, f uh, 17, uh, 16, 16. 16, then I uh, come back. So that time there's no Panchalama, no private jet. <laughs> so we have to <laughs> sitting on the car. No, 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 big uh, oh. truck, big truck. And uh, the bus uh, take uh, seven days or eight days to get in uh, Ando. When I come back in our monastery, almost as uh, before we left, so all wearing uh, civilian clothes, and uh, they all work in the fields. And then actually they having a meeting because they have uh, that uh, political campaign in Kumbum as well. So that that's different, you know. If we we told the Western people, 
like a political campaign. What is political campaign? What that happens? That they don't have an idea, you know. No, they don't. <laughs> so that's a political campaign is a very uh, uh, kind of uh, repressive. Repressive, yes. So all people, all the people, you know, village people or monastery people, and everyone together, they have to gather together and. Uh, sitting there and uh, maybe hours and hours just uh, one person came and uh, read that uh, document. So the all document is just uh, meaningless. So all oh, this person said the lots of long speech, that person's long speech. They read that uh, over and over and read that one, then after that one and read that one. All they read lots of documents. Then after that so we have to discuss those things. What do you think? What do you think? Then you have to say a lot. So some of them, just a short time, they can't speak. Some of them, they can say hours and hours though. Then afterwards, then say, oh, and then uh, they try to find the problem from this team. So some people said something very bad. Then they, they having checking your background. If your background is bad, like uh, some relationship with high lamas or panch lama or something, they try to target you. So that time you have a very bad signal because everybody come to you, kind of, ah, everybody say, oh, that person, Sonam or Lohsan or somebody, they did not. Then soon after, then you become that person. Mm -hmm. They put the hat on at yeah. you. The hat, the hat, physically hat or just the mentally. You know, the physically, they really made the big hat, uh, usually make, uh, made this hat with uh, newspaper. So they write the name, your name on it, then put on you and uh, kind of, uh, you know, humiliated you. So they like you just, uh, you're wearing this hat and everybody come and denounce you. Sometimes even beat you. So then s mostly they don't have it as a hat, physical, they don't have it. They just have, uh, you have it as a hat. So that means like uh, you're kind of a person. You're, you're a bad person at that uh, uh, team, not in the jail, like, uh, you know, like a ha house arrest, something like that idea. So you, you're going to lose your freedom and the rights, so you can't go somewhere. Then everybody started denouncing you. For instance, my uncle, Jaya Rambuchi, because he was uh, Pancha Lama's teacher, mm -hmm. then he went to jail in 1958. So then soon after, he come back because he, uh, Pancha Lama protected him. So when he come back, and then uh, <coughs> uh, he, uh, the, during the uh, socialist education that's movement, he had that hat. Then he with this hat through the Cultural Revolution. So every time the Red Guards and the people come and denounce, he has to stand up. Mm -hmm. Then just denouncing him. Like he has to stand like that. Then everybody just say nonsense. You know, they said that you're a bad person. How bad is it? Like terrible, terrible. You have to say, that you have to listen all of them. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of with that. So when I come back, the Kumbum doing that kind of thing, exactly. So then uh, <clears throat> after one year, then we all work in the fields. So no more schools. Then I grew up. I'm 17 now. So then I went to monast. Oh, uh, I went to fields to work, and due to a hard labor, so I became a farmer. You know, the Kumbum, it's a big monastery. Around this Kumbum has a beautiful scenery, like uh, very beautiful places. Then we cut the, all the green grasses. Then put the uh, turn into a field, like a field. So then the fields around this Kumbum area. So we <coughs> kind of uh, were uh, <coughs> planting those, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, then uh, we became farmer, like uh, during the Cultural Re Revolution, we staying there. Then the Cultural Revolution, they started uh, very beginning. They just uh, kind of a discussion, nothing. They discuss and they put the big, uh, they call the big uh, characters or something, you know, you have to write some articles to put on the wall. So denounce somebody. That's uh, free for everyone. You, you want to, you know, denounce somebody, you just uh, uh, make a post, put on the wall. 
accept the Chairman Mao, then you can announce everyone you can, <laughs> you can say. So then, uh, then they had the fighting in between, you know, that they called the Red Guards. They grew, you know, they formed lots of Red Guards. So that's Red Guards also a freedom. You know, if to say, oh, okay, our team, we should be a Red Guards team, that's fine. You're the leader, I'm the second leader, maybe we have a team, that's fine. Then we're gonna against the other team because the other team's bad, our concept is better, there is, then we have to denounce, or we have to debate. So then uh, if they win, then we're bad. They might put us in jail. If we win, so they're bad, we can do something for them. <laughs> like that's, that's, they started. How, so, is the, how is the uh, determined who wins? What happened? That's a, that's a, they, they have support by the government. We who do, who knows? We don't know. We but I mean, don't did know. they have guns to shoot the other each not side? Yet, not not that bad. Not that bad. Mostly the students. Like uh, uh, for instance, one university, one use university became two parts. One they call they have a special names like. Uh, uh, 8.8 .8 or 8.1 or something, two teams there. They announce which months, which days, or something they named by that. So then the two teams, they debating. They debating. One said, we should do that. That is the communist way. That's one said, no, your concept is wrong. We should do that. So then they debating. So actually, they behind the two uh, government officials, you know, kind of supported them. They don't know who is the uh, right person. Mm -hmm. Then later on, that person uh, went, so that group is bad. They put them in jail. <laughs> later on, that's a, the, uh, the Cultural Revolution started just that way. Mm -hmm. So for the normal people, almost nothing. You know, they just like, oh, every day just very chaos, big chaos, like a disorder everywhere. Mm -hmm. If you go to store, there's no, like a very chaos, but other than that's nothing. Then that's just uh, after five, six months or something, then the, everything changed. They come to, uh, you know, attack the monasteries, priests and the church like that. Then said that the monastery is bad. We have to destroy the monastery. Then they went crazy. They came and destroyed the monastery and destroyed the burn down the sutras and damaged the, the statues. Oh, terrible. Then just the. Did you all see this with yeah, your of own course, eyes? Of course. The Kumbum and the others. Kumbum, the time, you know, <coughs> in Amdo, our area, just one province, almost have uh, 600. Uh, monasteries, maybe more than that, but uh, they said, later they said 600 monasteries, all gone, all gone in one year. So uh, <coughs> some of them left. For instance, Kumbum is the one of them. So they tried to attack the Kumbum several times. Red guards come. So one time Red guards come, we're working the fields. The monastery monks, they don't want to destroy because the monastery still they have inside. They know they're our <laughs> Buddha statues. How can they can destroy, right? So we're working the fields. One day they said, uh, uh, one person just, uh, you know, asking us to come back because there's a big meeting or something. Then they all scared that they come back. Then the, uh, <coughs> in that courtyard I mentioned, that's what we call the Yanan Chira. In Yanachira, full of people there, mostly like university students there. They call red guards because they have uh, red, uh, some kind of uh, vendors on their, uh, <coughs> you know, spot. Then, uh, then they came and uh, they said, uh, you all sit down. Then we sit down and uh, they give a kind of uh, speech or talk or something. So then, they can't d recognize because the, the lots of people, different people, village people came too, you know, lots of people there. Then the goal is they're going to destroy the monastery. But they didn't destroy it. Their idea is they educate the monks to destroy them. But then they, uh, they, they teach and they talk and give talks and so forth. Afterwards, nothing happened. Then they're going to start doing something. Then they between themselves had to start a little debate and the fighting. So then one group said, don't destroy, we have to protect them because those are cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. 
One group said that we have to destroy them, those are bad things. So then, the <laughs> then the, those two groups fight, fight, fight. Then the two groups become bigger, bigger. You know, one group is supporting that group and uh, uh, protect them. One group said no. Then finally, unfortunately, that's a bad group went, won. So then the, the, the other group just disappeared. You know, they can't this. Then they said, uh, open the door, open the door. At that time, the all monks, they're taking care of the monastery. They locked the door. they just hiding behind somewhere. They said, come, come, come back and uh, open the door. We want to go in. Then they don't have a choice. Later, they find out. Then we opened the doors. Then they went in. And then they destroyed. By the time, even became uh, evening. So. You know, whole day just the chaos there, it's like a debating, fighting, like uh, talking like that. So, almost uh, five, six o'clock, they open the door, evening. So, they come in, they, they destroy the, some tankas, destroy the, some sutras. So, that's all. Then they stopped. Then they stopped. Then they said, okay, let's go. Then they just uh, went away. So, then start the next day, the monks. They formed the Red Guard team. So that was really bad. That was really bad because the, the team founded by uh, some so-called activist monks, so bad, bad monks, right, burn West monks. So those are come to a uh, house by house and, uh, uh, you know, uh, one by one, they just come and destroy all the uh, religious, uh, you know, those uh, uh, sacred objects, mm -hmm. like sutras and everything. So then, then that's maybe uh, almost the remained one month or something. Then there's uh, some kind of uh, notes or announcement from government said, uh, start today, can't destroy. So that stopped. So by the time the all the monasteries, all monasteries gone, so Gumbo maybe destroyed half of them, maybe 50% gone. Mm -hmm. So lots of bad things. Then afterwards, and then uh, <coughs> we just uh, then did all the school and everything stopped. There's a school you can't uh, study the books and everything. They consider that's bad. You have to study the mouse China mouse book. Uh, then the all uh, principals and teachers are bad. They arrested them maybe. So then the, some other just, you know, they are fighting. They call liberal and the conservative. So the uh, really good professors and teachers are uh, conservative. The liberal, they call the, the, the crazy ones, are, they became a good one and the red guards, and they kind of uh, surprised them. So then the school became very crazy, uh, then everywhere. So then uh, let me tell you a, a very interesting story. That's very funny, you know. We said uh, one day uh, we have a team leader. You know the monks all mix, uh, m all monks uh, gather together as a team. Have to go to a work like that. One day the team leader said uh, we have a new rule. We have to report to Chairman Mao every day, day and night. Okay, then uh, okay. Well, how? Then he uh, they they had the meeting. They gave him a big picture. Chairman Mao's big picture. A lot bigger than this tanka, really big. Then he put this in his wall. Then we all gather together and take off our hats and uh, very, you know, respectfully stand there. And uh, he was leading us. And then we report to Chairman Mao. The dear Chairman Mao, started today. We're going to, uh, <coughs> you know, today we're going to field to do so and so. So this is our mission. We're going to complete this mission and uh, please uh, be well, or whatever, some good wishes and something. <laughs> and then we left. So then we went to field to work. Then the evening, come back. We have to report to him again. So that, that day, he, with a little apology, because you know we didn't complete the weather and everything. So sorry, dear Chairman Mao, we didn't finish. That's all thing. But the next day, we will do better. <laughs> so that's very funny, right? So that's even became worse. Later, we have to carry His Holiness, oh, <laughs> almost His Holiness, <laughs> Chairman Mao's picture to the fields. So we made the banner. We carried this one, you know, 
go to a field, put the, him on the field, then we have to report to him constantly. So then one guy, one very funny story happened. One guy said, uh, I'm sick. I'm going to go home and see the doctor. So the team, team leader and, the, of course, this person had that very kind of flu bed complex or something, then said, uh, no, I don't know. So you should ask the Chairman Mao, not me. So that, that guy went to Chairman Mao, said that same thing. I have to see the doctor two days. Uh, can I be excused two days? Then, of course, Chairman Mao said nothing. <laughs> he just left. Then that guy, the team leader, was uh, <laughs> upset because that's teasing me, right? He was teasing me. So then he left, and then after the six days, and then he came back. And then he was really upset that he said he's just missing two days, but you already spent five days. Then he said, I asked the Chairman Mao. Chairman Mao didn't say anything. Then his, on his picture, he's like that, you know. <laughs> so that's why he might give me five days permission. So that's why I left. <laughs> so that's really a true story happened. Very funny. We, we go to a city to buy something. On the bus, they send the two students there. They sitting on the, that bus, uh, they're reading the Chairman Mao's quote. Chairman Mao said something, so and so. Then everybody have to read, repeat after that little uh, student. They will lead you all the way to the city. You know, like uh, two hours, you have to read that Chairman Mao's book. Even you go to a store. So if you want to buy a cup, so can I buy a cup? No, you can't. You have to say the Chairman Mao's quote first. Chairman Mao said, uh, every farmer has to study that day. Can I buy this cup? That person has to repeat this way. Chairman Mao said, so and so, this cup is $5. <laughs> then you have to say, then even, the, that's a really a true story. That's happened to us. <laughs> so that this person have a little bit difficult person, you know. They would say, no, 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 not this quote. Say something else. You can't say it, right? Everybody just remember those easy ones, right? Like a mantra, you know? So you, you can't say it. They have a red book prepared everywhere. So, OK, have this one. Sit there. They <laughs> set up the table there. Before we recite, don't buy this one. Then if you say, oh, OK, I don't have a time I'm leaving. No, they're going to serious. They're going to send somebody said, that person behave not good. <laughs> then you may be in trouble. So then you have to sit there and recite this one. After half an hour or something, then recite it, and then you come back and uh, <laughs> say to me. Then if they prove, then OK, then you can buy this one. Otherwise, you can't. Wow. So that is cultural revolution. A, <laughs> a very strict religion. Yeah, very religion. We had the Chairman Mao's picture or statue on our altar. In the morning, I have to go there and uh, say certain that's uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Chairman Mao's quote, just as a mantra. Say certain times, uh, then bow to him, uh, then leave. So one monk, uh, he had the Buddha, Buddha's picture uh, framed, of course. You can't put that's obvious. That's a very bad thing, right? So he put the Chairman Mao's picture in front of that Buddha. So then behind that has Buddha, right? So he's doing a little practice every day. So every monk knew that, but they didn't say that. One day, the Chinese, one Chinese catrit called uh, Mr. Wang. Mr. Wang came. The monk was holding a butter lamp, like saying prayer. That's just a really dangerous thing. So but this monk was very smart. And then he noticed that the Mr. Wang is coming. Then she said, long life for Chairman Mao. Long life for Chairman Mao. <laughs> then <laughs> he was protected. Then the Mr. Wang said, oh, that's uh, Akawandi. His name is Akawandi. Akawandi is wonderful. He is really a big heart and really loyal to the Chairman Mao. That's wonderful. But butter lamp for Chairman Mao is superstitious. That we can't do. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, that is the Cultural Revolution. That's all happened. That's a true story happened to our life. So, yes. Yes. yeah.
your humor helped you survive. Thank you. And your wisdom <laughs> to, to handle the circumstances with right. resilience. Right. Thank so you. why don't we um, move on to what's th what happens next? Um, <clears throat> 1958, the whole thing changed again. So <clears throat> uh, because the biggest reason is Chairman Mao passed away. So uh, the Deng Xiaoping uh, ruled the country. So, of course, Deng Xiaoping was uh, <coughs> denounced by the Chairman Mao. So that's why he's definitely upset. Of course, he can't uh, totally against the Chairman Mao because the, the communist team is very complicated. Even that person doesn't like the Chairman Mao, but he has to hold the Chairman Mao's flag. So otherwise, he can't uh, overcome or control the whole team. So that is the idea. But anyway, the communist, Chinese communist, that's name didn't change, but the, everything changed. Then the monastery, fortunately, reopened. Monks can go to a monastery like that. So I guess 19 early 80s. So then one day we had a meeting. We had a meeting, then said, uh, oh, start today Chinese the real uh, religious freedom, and uh, you know that's a real policy come back. So during those past years, something happened that's all sorry. So the, that's all too bad, all gone. <laughs> they, they have a saying. So uh, they said what, what they said, they have a saying, like uh, all the uh, same as the wind like a uh, flow away. Uh, if bathing as a water, just uh, uh <laughs> like a current, you know, just go away like that. That means like uh, forget them. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's all uh, they said. Now start today. You all have to be a, a monk. Monks, because you're monks, religious people, you have to wear your robes. There's no robes, all destroyed. There's no robes. Maybe somebody have, but uh, they can't uh, <laughs> take them back because they're so afraid. Maybe they're another trick or something, you know? So then said, no, no, no. Now the real religious uh, freedom has come back, and the real, the communist, uh, wonderful policies are back, and so forth. So then they. 1980? 1980. So then after that uh, education, long time education, several days, people are still afraid and they still can't do anything. Then finally they gave this real message. They said, no, tomorrow His Holiness Dalai Lama's delegation is coming. You all have to wear the robe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then, no, oh, okay. The then reason. The reason, yes. So some of us, yes. What, what is just... Explain to us, what is your role? What are you doing at this time now? That You're time now we're 30 years old. 30 years old. We're all working the fields as a farmer, mm -hmm. still in Kumbum. Kumbum as a museum. They call it museum, live museum. You know why, what is live museum? So museum, if you go to a museum, that's what they consider it not a live museum, because something in museum. In Kumbum as a museum, because the bad guys are living here, they are, we, they are looking at us. So used to they live here, those bad guys are, you know, they have uh, slaves and uh, those are slave drivers and uh, you might denounce them a little bit. Then uh, by the way, you can take a visit like that. So we're like, that's kind of a living uh, museum. museum. <laughs> so that's all changed. So we're still in the museum, we're working in the fields, but of course the situation is getting better and better and better. So then the 1980s, I said that the after that, then said that tomorrow, His Holiness, first delegation will come. You all have to host. So then uh, that time already, you know, our some monks come back because the 1958, they went to jail. 1980, uh, <coughs> already, uh, you know, 22 years. They, some of them spent 22 years in jail without any crime. They didn't do any bad thing, just they went to jail, that's all. So then uh, some monks are come back, some monks are went to a field to work so many years, 
some of them stay in Kumbu Monastery, but uh, as uh, during the Cultural Revolution and so forth, they work in the fields. So they all uh, have to be a monk, but uh, they really, some of them scared. Uh, some of them doesn't have uh, ropes. So then some reason, some people find some reason uh, having uh, ropes, but the most of them just wearing civilian clothes then to host uh, His Holiness delegation. So that was a very fascinating moment. What is your memory of that event? In the morning, then we all gather together on the uh, one one of the temples uh, outside door there. Mm -hmm. and then there's a, like an open area. We all gather there. And you know, in China, there's like uh, West. So if something happened. Everybody just, uh, <laughs> you know, they just uh, passing message. Then everybody knew that thing. So then uh, by the time maybe a thousand people already gathered there, <laughs> like around there. So what happened? What's happening? Then the police came and around this area. Then the five or six jeeps came, the cars, you know. Then uh, <coughs> they call the Beijing jeep. So the Beijing ships came and uh, they was big dust and like that, and then they came and uh, parked. They came out to those five delegations, uh, His Holiness delegations. The first uh, person is the Juchen Tukten. Juchen Tukten, he has passed away. He is the Person, then His Holiness' uh, uh, sister-in-law, uh, His Holiness, uh, uh, one other older brother, Lo Song Santan, uh, then two uh, young people I can't remember. So that time, pretty young, like uh, in his their twenties or something. So five people came, and uh, we thought like a very brand new something in our eyes, you know. They're wearing like a Tibetan chubas. Of course, that's like a little modern style, <laughs> but uh, then with big katas and, uh, you know, they dressed very formally, then they come and uh, they bow to us like that, and then they went to a monastery, and uh, uh, of course, that's before that we had the preparation for the monastery. We have to, you know, dust out and everything and clean and put the that then we couldn't find the kata. So they said the, everybody have to hold the kata, the five or six uh, lamas there, so including myself. Then we, we couldn't find the kata. Then we find some kata from altar. So otherwise, at that time, there's no kata to buy, and uh, where can get the kata? You know, after that cultural revolution, those are bad things. <laughs> so we, we have uh, some old katas, we're holding them. Then they come and uh, uh, they introduced, you know, that's uh, they call the uh, Chinese, uh, <coughs> uh, what they call uh, foreign affair uh, department or something, and minister, yeah, those leaders, they company with them. They said, oh, those are uh, His Holiness delegation, so on, so on, so who all do it like that. And then, then after that, the day saying prayers, that our Except our older monks say prayers. The younger monks can't. Uh, younger monks can't say the prayer because they have forgotten. <laughs> can't say it. So we said short prayers and uh, after visit and then come to uh, my resident. So that time my resident became uh, uh, team number one, which is every team has a place to study, work, live together like that. So that's the reason our. Uh, resident uh, still uh, exists there, otherwise it's going to destroy and gone. So then uh, we host them there, and uh, they ask lots of questions and so forth. <laughs> then we have to hide lots of things, so we have to pretend lots of... Then they ask, why didn't wear the robes like that? And then. Uh, uh, then we can't answer because uh, uh, like that. And then the, some, some of the Chinese leader, very smart, they said, oh, because in China we have a religious freedom, so maybe they don't want to wear the rope <laughs> like that. So then they, they laughed and then they said, oh, okay, okay, okay. So never mind, we won't, we're going to change our subject, they change to some, <laughs> somewhere else. They don't want to give uh, our hard time, right? So anyway. 
So that, that was uh, first. Then, then after that, then the situation is getting better and better, better and better. So lots of things happened. But during that delegation, do you remember the date that that was for, for the record? So <clears throat> that's, uh, it's a summer. I, I can't remember exactly, I guess sometime maybe uh, uh, July, maybe August. Sometime. 1980? Yeah, 1980. Yeah, yeah. 1980, uh, July of 1980, sometime like And that. you were 30 years old. Mm. You had been working as a farmer. Yes. And uh, there wasn't much practice going on in the monastery. Yes. Of any kind. Yes. And you were not allowed to meet with this delegation privately? No, no. The delegation doesn't have a choice, too. They just came as a team. Uh, they came to uh, this monastery, visited. Then they, we had uh, that, uh, you know, like a reception, food and everything. Then we had the same time, had a little meeting with somebody. Then they left. That's all. There's uh, no uh, other arrangements for that. But wasn't that delegation surrounded often by Tibetan people living in the in the villages and and with complaints about what had happened and that's a, that's a, that's a later on they happened to different places in Lhasa especially not in the Kumbum because Kumbum I mentioned you know uh, mostly local people are Chinese uh, Muslims and a few Tibetans so that day I very clearly remember that when they leave uh, around the they came very early, maybe uh, uh, 9, maybe 9.30. So when they leave around uh, 4, maybe something like that, then before even lots of people there, but uh, still uh, not uh, really crowded. When they leave, I guess thousands and thousands of people there. Then the Jujin uh, <coughs> Tutin asked me, all of them are Tibetans? Then I don't think so. Then I said, some of them, yes. They, they might have some Tibetans. That's, that's what we said. <laughs> but at that time, they didn't say, but even the Chinese or Muslims, they just, from the crowded, they said, hey, say hello to His Holiness, something like that. So they said that. They didn't say something against the, the <laughs> Chinese government, but they saying that, hey, hello, say hello to pass this message to the, His Holiness, or something they saying that. Then he has to say, yes, yes, like that. <laughs> but who knows who is this person, you know, like from the crowd. That was so I, they said that, yeah. Well, you were there a momentous day. What happens to you next? Then, <clears throat> then the, everything's changed. Then they gave me, uh, of course, then no more field. And then I'm not working field. And then I became, uh, uh, I went to college, though. I went to college two times. So then that time, 19... Uh, 80s, uh, early 80s, I went to a college. So the college, uh, because there's a, a Buddhist class or something opened. So one of uh, uh, <coughs> very uh, renowned Lama, he was a professor. Uh, he was in the field during that cultural revolution. Then the university opened up and uh, they kind of uh, welcome him back and he come back and he gave teachings then i request and then they said yes and then i went to this college and study with him so actually there's one important thing i want to mention during the cultural revolution very bad very tight everything you have to report to government every time the team leaders are terrible you have to report them even that time my teacher uh, jay Rinpoche, and uh, one other teacher I mentioned, you know, the Dr. Rinpoche's teacher, he was with me. Then those people encouraged me to study. I even studied secretly. Some of the monks secretly practice. So I'm very lucky because I was my uncle. The relationship is very important, right? If people ask, oh, he's my uncle. Oh, okay, that's covered. So otherwise, you always with this person doing what are you doing like that they might say that so uh, in that time they're giving us uh, teachings dharma teachings i never stopped 
even during the Cultural Revolution. Really? Not really every day, but uh, you know, I, I, I had a chance to practice. And so that's why. With documents or was no, it just t no. verbal? That's why I'm just telling the Western students sometimes, how come? Then I say, you can go to a Google all day, right, all time. So that's a Tibetan Lama sir, as a life for Google. So <laughs> they have everything in their mind. So they were just telling you, okay, then they, they can say the prayers, and the, we, we, we don't have a prayers and sutras and everything. So he really, the Jaya Rinpoche, encouraged me to study. Even Chinese, you have to study. That's a really very amazing thing that in the future, definitely you need the Dharma, not the, the farm and the fields. Those things you can learn, that's good things, but the most important thing, Dharma, knowledge, wisdom, that's need. So that's why he encouraged me to study. I secretly study. I studied my uh, Chinese, I studied my own. I went to Chinese school just four years, that's all. Then after that, I never had a chance to study Chinese, but I studied my own. So then I studied Tibetan, my own. Of course, and then he teaching me. Then the Dharma and the everything, secretly. Secretly. Yeah. Even from that time or even after, what do you think are the, the most precious teachings of the Dharma? Yeah, most of the precious teachings of Dharma a lot, but uh, how to, you know, behave yourself, how to face to uh, your enemy. So that is most important thing. Mm -hmm. So one time we're uh, <coughs> working in the field. So then the, the, the team leader is really upset with us for some reason, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Then he couldn't find a uh, uh, reason to complain us. So then my uncle was older, then he just take a little break. Then I with him stayed maybe just, uh, I don't know, maybe three minutes, <laughs> I guess less than five minutes. Then he started yelling us. He was really saying bad words and uh, saying lots of nonsense words. If he, if he say, okay, go, go, go and work, don't sit here, that's fine, right? But instead, he's really saying bad things, and uh, some of them message from the communist uh, language and uh, really hurting us. So I'm really, really upset. But he was laughing, you know. He said, no, no, don't worry. So then later said, uh, you have to pay, practice this patience, you know. In our one of the practice, patience is the most important thing. That is the patient. He's not really a bad person. He's just saying dirty words and bad words. Like that's all controlled by something else, controlled by the policy, controlled by the situation, not from him. So that's really, a, you know, kind of uh, make me calm. Later on, the Cultural Revolution and everything's over, this person said, oh, I always nice to you, right? Like that, and then front of people. So those are some of them are new people, they really don't know. They thought like really they're good. Then we have to say, how, what can you say? I say, yes, yes, yes. I always protect them. <laughs> so that's, that's his life. So anyway, later we, we really became a good friends. So those kind of message really, really are important to us. So anyway. Yes. So the Dharma. Compassion. Compassion, for all yes. Beings. Compassion can protect yourself. That's his message, yes, yeah. What happens to you now? So there are 19, you go to college, it's 1980. Yeah, then after that, so I, I went to, uh, I was sent to a uh, kind of uh, 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 the, uh, uh, I became a Chinese. Uh, Catrit, uh, one of the Catrit uh, worker official, maybe yeah, let's say official. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, in uh, in the West. That's the system is different. I went to. Uh, I became a leader of a Buddhist association. The Buddhist association, even Buddhist association, uh, they formed by the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. So that's why the the secretary most important thing. That's the secretary is a party member. So then the, the, uh, the chairman and the vice chairman and the so forth, those are all monks or uh, high lamas. So I became a, a chairman 
of the uh, Buddhist Association in provincial level in Qinghai province. So I stayed in big city. Then I visited the different monasteries, kind of uh, doing a, like a, a coordinator, like a go between the monastery and the people and the government, you know, if the uh, monastery have uh, some kind of request or difficulties or something, then we can report to government. Then government have uh, some kind of pass, uh, you know, message or something you have to pass into uh, the people like that. So almost 10 years I was working in that uh, office. So that's actually a kind of a good sign though, not really compared than that before, it's better. We have a conference mm -hmm. in Beijing and different places uh -huh. like that. What, what, uh, did they know your background as a Rinpoche? Definitely, that's why they that's chose why they us. That's why they chose you. Yeah, they, that's uh -huh. why they chose us. Like, uh, you know, in, in China, the system is very interesting. Yeah. So they said the five religion, religious, major religious exist in China. So Buddhism, Buddhist, uh, Taoism, Muslim, Catholic, Protestant. So they considered those two different religions. <laughs> you know, the Catholic yeah. and the Protestant yeah. is the two different religions. So those five religions they considered as official recognized religion. So those five religions has uh, uh, administrator and offices in central China. Then every province has their office, like uh, their branches there. Mm -hmm. So I was in their branch in the Xinyin. And just yeah. give me a little quick statement about what were your duties? So that's the duties I mentioned, you know, that time because the monasteries uh, destroyed during the Cultural Revolution, the monastery had to reopen. So then the religious re re reform again, reopened the monastery, reopened the, the system and the study, that's, you can't against the, the communist, and also you have to practice in between. You know, they said the walking, the Chinese said the walk in the water and the find the stone. Like, uh, you, you don't know where's the stone, right? <laughs> you just like, <laughs> that's, that's what they're saying. So that's why they don't know the policy. You know, the policy they didn't create it yet. So you have to do something, but you don't know how to do it. So that is our mission. They just go between and find out. That that's very interesting. Uh, let me quickly share one yeah. story. Very yeah, interesting. Please. So supposedly the 600 monasteries destroyed, they're going to reopen. So the government said that now we can't reopen that much. Maybe we just reopen maybe 10%, maybe 20%. But people said, uh, uh, we don't need to worry about the government. If the government uh, support and give the, uh, you know, permission, that would be fine. Uh, if they don't give permission, we're going to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So then lots of monasteries restarted, re reestablished. Mm -hmm. So then some of them, the government recognized. So that's called the legal monastery. Mm -hmm. So the, some of them, they opened, but they didn't recognize, so that's called illegal monastery. So when we go to uh, those monasteries to visit, only allowed to uh, legal ones, not the illegal one. So, but the illegal one is doing better job than the legal ones because they want to approve themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So then we're so confused. We don't know which one is legal and uh, illegal, you know? Yeah. So we, our mission is go to the monastery, try to, find the information, the monastery, so pass those, uh, you know, like uh, the policies to them. You can't do that, you can't do that, so that's not allowed to do. Okay, you can't do that, so you do that. If you have a difficulty, so we're gonna report to government. This is our mission, right? They say, okay, we have a shortage of money because we have a full of uh, money and the gold and the silvers in the monastery. In 1950, they, they confiscated, all of them gone. Then even during the Cultural Revolution, they destroyed. Now we wanna reopen our monastery, we don't have anything. That's the main thing. 
Then we say, well, we're going to report to them, but when they're going to give money or not, or yet, we don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's just our mission, right? Even though we can't go to uh, illegal monasteries. One time, we went to a monastery. We don't know that's legal or illegal. We went there, we assuming that's just legal. Then we're sitting down, they serve the tea, and we just uh, start the meeting, and they report, and then we make a notes. And then somebody just uh, run and come to us, that this is an illegal one, <laughs> then run. Then we all have to leave without tea and everything, just run. So <laughs> that's, you know, Do we're we, kind of playing yeah, as a kid it, all the time. It's, it, it's like a game almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, a, like a game. Uh, yeah. And, and we're... And, and so how many years did you do this? And where is the Panchen Lama at this point? So that's the Panchen Lama story then. Because that time I just mentioned the monastery, you know, open certain monastery or unopen. We don't know. We're not sure. Mm -hmm. Then finally the government said, okay, the, if you have a monastery exist here so that the people need a religious uh, uh, you know, thing here, then you can reopen. That is the, their policy, bottom line. They said that if you have a monastery before, you had before destroyed or something, then people also need it, then you can have it. You can't uh, start a new monastery. That's, uh, that's their rule. So then the reincarnation thing happened, the same thing. They said, okay, we have a reincarnation thing in the Tibetan tradition. We want our reincarnation. Then the government confused. They said yes or no. Uh, according to the religious, uh, uh, you know, freedom, r recovering that religious re freedom, that's policy. They should have it, but uh, that's maybe a not good idea. They said, okay, religious uh, reincarnation is uh, uh, reestablishing feudalism. So that means no, you can't have it. Mm -hmm. So they stopped. Then we had, uh, like, uh, we're coordinators, right? We just go between. Then they ask the government, please, you have to open up the policy. Otherwise, people really need that. They said, no, no, no. You have to tell, uh, you have to educate the people. That is a feudalism. You can't do it. So we, we have been a hard time anyway. In uh, that time, because the everywhere opened, the monks and Tibetans can go back to India. When they went to India, they asked His Holiness and uh, asked the religious leaders in India. They find that their reincarnation anyway. They come back and uh, secretly they find that they said, identified, this is our reincarnation, that was our reincarnation, like that. Then soon after the Chinese government, they realized this too. So they called the underground reincarnations. So then they said, that, okay, we have to recognize this, otherwise we're going to lose the power. So later on, the, all the reincarnations controlled by the outside <laughs> the Dalai Lama's group. So that's not a good idea. We have to do. So they, they started. When they started, then that time the Panchen Lama already on the uh, you know, position and stage. Then he's really strongly protected that uh, <coughs> religion and the Things. So then, so that's lots of things, but I would like to make a very short uh, point there. So what happened in uh, 80, <coughs> 1986, seven that time in Lhasa had uh, several times the uh, protest, yeah. the monks protest. So then the, uh, <coughs> the <coughs> police came and arrested them. Uh, then government can want to crack them down. So Panchen Lama want to uh, protect them. Panchen Lama said that that's just not the right thing because that's uh, uh, things from the people, not from the, you know, some organization or something. The people have uh, some kind of uh, uh, request. They're not uh, they complaining, maybe something. So that's why they acting like that. Mm -hmm. So unless also uh, our uh, the Chinese constitution, they said. Uh, allowed people to protest. So that's why you should do that. So then the, the, he was protecting them, right? So then when they arrest the, some monks or something, and they, he calling those leaders in Tibet, uh, oh, I heard somebody uh, was arrested. Uh, how, well, how come? Please uh, release them, like that. 
So then later on, that's the thing, sir, lots of stories there, but I don't want to share all of them. But uh, some reason he said that that's not a good idea. You know, I have to, for the long run, I have to idea. So that's his idea is he gonna form a big uh, minister in uh, <coughs> Beijing. It's a very high level. So he will be a, become leader of that minister. Ministry. 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 He is the minister. So then uh, that ministry will in charge of those all Tibetan monasteries. So then that's, uh, that's ministry have to have uh, money to financial support. Then that's that time the Chinese government having a hard time for the financial support. Then he said, uh, I will start a company which called uh, Ganjin Company. This Ganjin Company doing lots of business, and then that uh, money will support uh, that uh, ministry. And uh, I will in charge that one. So I will protect them to don't do right, wrong thing. So then your government can't uh, always attack them too. So then the government thought, ah, that is uh, something very dangerous. <laughs> so then right after that, he passed away. So that's a big issue, big question. How come like that? But anyway, that's one. I don't have any information why he died and so forth. But anyway, he, did, he passed away. When he passed away, he was very young, like uh, 54 or 55. So when he passed away, the, his reincarnation thing is a big issue. So how can find his reincarnation? So that time, fortunately, the reincarnation things the government already approved because, you know, the issues in India and so forth. So the government said, His Holiness, oh, the Panchen Lama's reincarnation, we can uh, have it. But uh, who gonna find his reincarnation? So there's a big issue. That that time, the government, uh, uh, Chinese government, is doing better than now. So lots of liberal leaders are still there. Mm -hmm. So then some of them they said, okay, well we have a search group, reform uh, group called search group. The search group has high lamas and Chinese officials and the scholars and so forth. Then doing several things. One thing, we have to search his reincarnation. One is complete his autobiography. Uh, one is complete his, uh, some kind of fulfill his dreams, what he wants, you know, we have to complete them. So certain things are, they're doing. Then I was in that team. So <coughs> then said, one point said, uh, the final decision you know, the, when they find the reincarnation, final decision the Chinese government have to do because the that's communist government is the, uh, you know, the uh, ruling, <laughs> you know, like a power, right? Mm -hmm. So, but we can ask His Holiness reference. So we can include in his idea, you know, what he thought, what's his idea. So then that time, even that, Tibetan people are very happy. So that's allowed him to involve that uh, thing, right? The reincarnation, searching for reincarnation thing. So then, <coughs> then situation is better. Then uh, they secretly, some reason they contact you, His Holiness. That later on, I find that out. And then I said, uh, oh, the, I, uh, the people said, uh, the Chinese government, from Hong Kong, they contact you, Jalu Donju, which is uh, His Holiness' older brother. Mm -hmm. Contact to him and report to His Holiness that they're looking for uh, <coughs> Panchen Lama's reincarnation. Then please uh, have your consideration too. So that is the basic message. Then that's everything's going better. Then all of a sudden, that's changed. What's happened? Because the Tiananmen Square. So the Tiananmen Square, the students come and uh, come up and uh, protest, and uh, they want that democracy. So then the liberal leaders said uh, that is right because the uh, because the uh, <coughs> students doing right thing. We have to support them. So that the conservative leaders said, no, 
as a student against the communist. So that is the competition between the communist and capitalist. So they had a big fight in one month. Finally, the conservatives once are won. So then they cracked down the students. They removed the liberal uh, leader's you know, position. So then our Panchalama's reincarnation plan destroyed. So then the new leader came and they said, we can't contact His Holiness. So His Holiness Dalai Lama is the counter-revolutionary. So we can't contact him. And we have to denounce this one, that one. So that's the reason the situation became worse. So finally, the His Holiness Dalai Lama's reincarnation came up too. So Chinese version Panchalama and Dalai Lama's version Panchalama. Two different, two different people. people. So I have a lots of stories that, but uh, now I don't have a time to explain it. What's gonna have, What's gonna? We should do. Rinpoche La, I so yeah. appreciate our st our time together and what you the richness and complexity that you've shared with us. But I also understand that we have run out of time for this <laughs> right, interview. Right, right. So yeah. I I guess I would like to know: Is there another way we could continue? Yes, of course. I would like to share more stories with you because you are doing such wonderful things. That's really neat. You know, I'm, I'm telling my story all the time. This is my, not only my personal life or my personal story. This is 50 years hidden Tibetan story, even Chinese story. So that's history everybody should know. So I will say that. So today, uh, I don't have uh, this time now, but uh, tomorrow as well. So I'm very busy. But how about that? Can I invite you guys to uh, Indiana, <laughs> to Hoosier's place? We would, <laughs> we would be delighted to okay. come. Then it's sometime you make uh, a plan and come to our place. Then I can spend more time with you and share those Good. details. It sounds like you, you understand the value of the work that the oh, Tibet course. Oral History oh, Project is oh, doing. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to conclude with this statement. Uh, yes. As I said, I would come back. Uh, Rinpoche La, if this interview was shown in Tibet or China, would this be a problem for you? No problem with uh, uh, at all so far. So after, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Can we use your real name for this project? Definitely. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. And You're just welcome. the beginning. <laughs> just the beginning, okay. <laughs>